Shalom everybody. We're here by the holy grave site of like say, the Yiddish Mama Rachel, Rachel's tomb, Kever Rachel, the mother of Yosef Atzadik and Abinyamin. And we're here now in the nine days leading up to Tisha B'Av. This is a, a difficult time. Why is it a difficult time? Because we're made forcefully to feel the pain of the Beit HaMikdash, of the destruction of the Holy Temple. And the pain is reflected in all types of crazy things happening in your day with kids, with spouses, with money, health, <clears throat> appointments, things not working out just to make you feel like ashes. <laughs> to make you feel the ashes. All this as a reflection of feeling the destruction of the temple. It comes out more readily noticeable in these nine days leading up to Tisha B'Av. Our attitude is to accept the feeling, to relate to the feeling, and to express the pain. Uh, just a little story about this to, uh, to better understand what we're trying to say. <clears throat> there was a wrestler, his name was Ovnachum Schuster. He was from Poland, we're talking about before World War I, and he as a young man heard about Rabbi Nachman's teachings, about going to Uman Rosh Hashanah, so he traveled the border. Back then it was still before World War I, so it was okay. But the borders were open. He would travel. He traveled from Poland to Ukraine, getting to Uman Rosh Hashanah. There he learned about Breslau, what it's about, what they do, getting up at midnight, crying over the Beit HaMikdash, this is the temple. That's what he picked up from there. So that, after Rosh Hashanah, when he came back to his hometown, his home village in Poland, what did he start doing? He started getting up for Chatzot, getting up at midnight, to mourn over the Holy Temple. Now this Rav Nachum was almost illiterate, almost. He basically, he basically just knew how to read Hebrew letters and that's it. But he had no idea what he was saying. He started getting up in the middle of the night, going and at home he couldn't wake up everybody. So he decided to go to the local study hall, the local Beit Midrash, where there was a woman's section which was empty. And he went there at midnight, he would sit on the floor, and he started saying the tikkun chatzot, the dirges for lamenting over the destruction of the temple, and crying. At that time, when he would come, there would be a group of Torah scholars who were learning all day and way into the night until midnight. So when they would be about to leave, they saw this of Nachum coming, and they were curious, what's he doing coming here in the middle of the night? And they saw that this Nachum, this quote-unquote ignoramus, he is coming to say the midnight lament, to cry over the destruction of the temple. They started to crack up, they started to laugh. He said, this guy doesn't even know basic alphabet, he doesn't even know how to learn, doesn't even basic Torah law, and he's now getting to this devotion for crying over the destruction of the temple. So it bothered them. It bothered them to the extent that two of them, one, his name was Rav Mordechai Sokolover, Rav Mordechai Halberstadt, or Halberstam, and the second one, his name was Rav Shlomo Gavriel. They decided to approach him and say, this is not for you, Rav Nachum. So they approached him, he said, Rav Nachum, what are you doing? Getting up for Chatzot, this is for Big Tzadikim. Let Big Tzadikim do this devotion. You go start learning Mishnayot, start learning Chumash, Rashi, start learning basics. What are you doing this for? So he said to them like this, you guys have everything. You're learned, you're able to learn Torah all day and into the night. You guys don't need the Beit HaMikdash. You don't need the Temple. Me, like you said, I have nothing. I don't, I don't even know how to learn. I have no Mishnah. I have no Chumash and Rashi. I have no basics in Judaism. I have nothing. My life is burnt. I feel it. Me, I need the Beit HaMikdash. They heard this. They heard these simple, straightforward words coming from Rav Nachum's heart. And they said to themselves, wait a second, what is he saying? We don't feel we need the Temple? One second, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. We don't feel that we need the Beit HaMikdash. We have Gan Eden. We're learning all day Torah into the night. We feel great about our lives. We have an amazing life in learning Torah. We don't need the Temple. He has nothing, he feels it. Is that correct? Are we on the right page? If I'm now learning Torah all day and I don't feel the destruction of the Temple, am I on the right page, Rabbi Shalom? I have the right address? They woke up on the spot. On the spot, they woke up, hey, we're probably living a fake life. This is not really the Torah way of life that Hashem wants. I don't know. They woke up, 
both of them asked Rav Nachum, what, what happened to him? Where did he go? He told them, I went to Oman, I met the breast lovers, they taught me this. They also decided to go to Oman and it became very, very big breast lover chassid. The point of the story, like we were saying initially, do you feel the pain? Do you feel what you're going through? Most people, when they have something pain, they look for an immediate painkiller. No, no pain, no pain. Whether it's a physical painkiller or to take things in life, to sidetrack them, not to focus on their pain, to go off, to off tangent. No pain, okay? That's, so most people, they like, they like that. They want to run away from their reality and experience no pain. Here in the nine days, or in life in general, as an extension of the nine days, if you feel your pain, that's healthy. Because the pain that you're going through is a reflection of the destruction of the temple. The destruction of the temple, the repercussion of that is the pain we feel emotionally, spiritually, mentally, even physically. The, all that is a rippled effect of the destruction of the temple. So based on that, yes, you need to cry for the Beit HaMikdash. Yes, you have to cry. Because what you're going through is a result of the destruction of the temple. So you, what do you do? You cry over it. How, how do I cry? What do you want to do to cry over the temple? When you cry over and you express to Hashem that what you're going through hurts, and you connect it to Hashem, and you, with that, automatically there's an understanding that it's related to me being in exile, being in Galut, which means there's no temple, there's no Beit HaMikdash. This itself is the mourning. This is the expression of mourning. Expression of mourning, in, in context of what we're trying to say, definition being that you express uh, a recognition of the pain that you're going through, that it's related to a bigger picture. Me as a Jew, what I'm going through personally is a reflection of what the Divine Presence, the Shekhinah, is going through also in exile. And my personal difficulties and challenges and setbacks and failures with children, with spouses, with money, with health issues, with serving Hashem issues, with working on my Midot issues, all these issues, 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 they're all ultimately connected to the Galut of the Shekhinah. When you recognize that, that's already a solution. That's what they say. Lasum, it's a verse. Lasum, la avele tzion peer tachat efer. To give, to place for those who mourn over Zion, which is the temple. Peer, glory, instead of ashes, efer. Ashes meaning that you feel burnt out. You feel that you've done so much in life to try to make it in life, whichever way it is, whichever how you define it. And it just didn't work out. You got stuck, and you had setbacks and everything, and you feel burnt. I feel like I'm ashes now. After everything I've gone through in life, I feel like I'm ashes. You recognize that, you cry over that, you tell Hashem, this is, this is very hard. Even to try to be positive, it's not working out. You want to be, have a positive attitude? No. You feel like you're being squished and squished and squished. You can't even develop a positive attitude. This recognition of being ashes and you don't deny it, you accept it and you realize that this is a bigger picture, what I'm going through, it's a reflection of the destruction of the temple. For such people, Hashem puts pe'er, glory, instead of ashes. Pe'er is the same letters as ashes. Efer is aleph peresh. Pe'er, glory is pe aleph resh. It's the exact same letters there, switched around. Meaning that when you feel you're burnt to the ground, you feel like you're ashes, in your life, you feel setbacks and failures, and you recognize it, this leads the way to the pair, the glory of the Hashem. So that, that's what the, the sages teach us, whoever mourns over the destruction of the temple, will be zoche to see it being rebuilt. This obviously on a national level is understood, that those Jews who take part in the mourning for the temple will yes, see the rebuilding of the temple, but it's also on a personal level what you're going through. If you mourn over what you're going through and you express the pain you don't try to like swallow it up and deny it you take time every day to have a mourning period of what you're going through and you're open about it with Hashem such a person will see the building of his temple meaning Kedusha and holiness coming into his life as a result of him recognizing the problem and expressing to Hashem the pain over it such a person will have salvation how? Nobody knows. When? Nobody knows. But in the end, it comes to a person. We should be zochet to see in our lifetime this year, the rebuilding of the Beit HaMikdash, the coming of Mashiach, and then we can declare like Rav Nosen said about himself. Rav Nosen said, my Mashiach has already come. 
He said about himself, my Mashiach is already here. We, each and every one of us, should be able to see that we are not the ones preventing the Mashiach from coming. In fact, we should already be living in Mashiach mode. We're to feel a redemption in ourselves, to feel good about ourselves and about our service in Hashem, and to have the ability to do a fresh start, to start again and coming close to Hashem.